Skylanders Imaginators, the final game released in the Skylanders franchise in 2016. At the time of its release, I was in high school and had been away from the franchise ever since the release of Superchargers, my least favorite game. And honestly, I had no idea there was even a sixth game until early of 2021, when I started to get back into collecting and playing Skylanders again. Once I had learned that Skylanders Imaginators existed, I knew I had to have it, so I started doing my research. Instantly, I was hooked. Seeing the new senseis and some of the best figure designs I have ever seen, and also learning that they brought back some of my favorite villains from Trap Team to be Skylanders, I was so excited. But then I thought, why is it called Imaginators? And that's when I learned about potentially the greatest gimmick the Skylanders franchise had ever introduced, creating your own Skylander. So then, wasting no more time, I found a seller and Skylanders Imaginators was one step closer to being mine. So while I waited, I figured I'd look into some others' opinions about the game. Safe to say, a lot of people dislike this game. But why? Everything about it sounds fantastic, from the senseis to the imaginators and chaos returning as the big bad. I just couldn't understand why the game was so disliked. Until the day came and imaginators arrived. A few hours into playing, and that's when I started to understand why so many people believe Skylanders Imaginators is the worst game in the franchise. It's truly the story. The story is so bad and lacks substance horribly that I personally got so bored and didn't return to the game for days. Overall, the storyline is just bad and feels extremely lazy. First off, surprise, Chaos is back as the main villain. Cool, but he's been the main villain for literally all of the previous games. I don't count the darkness, really. Next, we have the knockoff of the Force from Star Wars called Mind Magic, which for some reason you only use once or twice during the entire game, when it's supposed to be the main focus and plot of the entire game. Now we have the fact that nearly half of the game is a DLC and cannot be played without a sensei from a certain element, along with 5 more expansion packs. That's 15 levels you cannot play if you don't have a corresponding Skylander, which are not cheap and have never been cheap. Now, I could add a few more things, like you can't reset creation crystals in-game, all Skylanders from previous games are useless, all in-game music is unoriginal and copyrighted, the cookie cutter imaginator process is maybe the worst and kind of ruins it, but the entire game is a giant cash grab and it even had the audacity to add microtransactions. But I'll stop the nagging, because that's really not why I'm here today. I'm here to justify this game, show why I love this game, and also prove that Skylanders Imaginators is a top tier Toys to Life game, and a great Skylanders game. Yes, the story is boring. Very simple and easy to follow. It doesn't even continue any of the previous stories from the past games. But I think that was kind of the goal. See, the Skylanders timeline had been thrown off kilter ever since Superchargers release, so I don't think it mattered when and where this story took place. They definitely threw all their eggs into one basket for this game, bringing back almost all of the fan favorite NPCs and villains, especially Chaos. And it makes sense that they did this because they wanted to reach a new audience. A lot of the kids, now teens, that had started off with Spire's Adventure back in 2011 were growing up and out of Skylanders. Many players like myself were either in high school or heading into it, and either grew out of it or just had no time anymore. But I believe Activision had noticed this when their sales had dipped after Trap Team, and they decided to branch away and try to reach a new generation of kids and a younger audience, just like they did for Spire's Adventure. So how do you get kids' attention with a game with a franchise that already has five previous games? You make everything from the previous games useless and unneeded. Then how do you get their attention? Because you need to gain their attention with a main gimmick. Have them customize and create their very own Skylanders. So boom, like that, you've got the fans happy and excited for a sixth game, along with introducing the franchise to a newer audience. So now, they needed to come up with and create a new story that pleases and keeps all players intrigued. So they kind of met in the middle to create a story for both of their audiences. For the older audiences, they brought back so many NPCs and familiar faces to go with you along the entire game. For the younger audience, they needed a simple story that was easy to follow, light and funny unlike superchargers that was kind of dark and gritty and also bring back the most popular villain chaos to be the main villain once again so let's take a look at the plot basically chaos discovered mind magic and is using it to create an evil army now eon needs you and your skylanders to stop chaos and his minions 
You'll also need to use this mind magic to create your own army of imaginators to use along the new senseis to defeat chaos once and for all. Boom. There's your plot. It's good, new, and intriguing to everyone. So why didn't it work out well? It's the storyline. From point A to point B, beginning to end, this storytelling is overly simple and kid-oriented, that it turns away most of the players who had grown up with the games for the past six years. They took a big step forward with superchargers and making it more mature, but then took 10 steps back for imaginators. So if you didn't enjoy the story, it probably was just not targeted for you. Clearly the story is the low point of Skylanders Imaginators, but there's high points of this game as well, so let's get into some of them. Most of the levels in Skylanders Imaginators are detailed, fun, have lots of combat, and classic Skylander puzzles. Also, usually ending in a pretty cool and challenging boss fight. Some of my favorite levels being Mushroom River, Shelmont Shores, and Dragon Temple all are jam-packed with things to do and collect. From the classics of soul gems and treasure chests to new items and activities such as legendary selfie frames, imaginator chests, egg claw machines, troll radios, and XP balls, but my personal favorites, gong battles and sensei shrines. It definitely takes a good amount of time to 100% complete this entire game, and we haven't even gotten to the 15 levels for expansion packs and sensei realms. I will say, Getting these 15 levels is the biggest cash grab in Skylanders history. But when you do unlock them, most of them are pretty cool and lots of fun. Yes, these require you to have a sensei of every element, along with two expansion pack pieces and three Skylanders with built-in expansion packs. In saying this, I understand why a lot of people dislike this game. Senseis aren't cheap in any way and are still raising in price every day. Even I still don't have Robo, so I haven't gotten to play the Lost Imaginite Mines. So a lot of people who say they don't like this game probably just haven't had the chance to play the whole game. Which is sad, because the game has been out for around 6 years now, and contains some of my favorite levels in the entire franchise. The combat in Skylanders Imaginators is near perfect, and I'd say the second best combat in the franchise right behind SWAT Force. The only thing holding it back from being the best is that your Skylander seems to have a pretty big hitbox and you'll take damage sometimes without even actually being hit. Overall the combat flows beautifully and makes it perfect to do combos. Yes, the strength and health of 90% of the enemies in this game are ridiculous, but thankfully you've got senseis and imaginators to ease your pain. Now on to the enemies. The enemies and imaginators can be some of the strongest and most annoying enemies from any game ever. You've probably seen me get demolished by these enemies during my live streams and seen how frustrating they can be. But honestly, I wouldn't want it any other way. I enjoy the challenge. Yes, most previous game Skyliners are useless, but that just makes you appreciate the senseis even more. See. Spire's Adventure is hard for me to play anymore for any other reason than nostalgia. Spire's Adventure is super easy and has no difficulty settings, making the game less challenging and nowhere near fun for experienced players. Whereas for Imaginators, you must learn every move for every sensei to compete and survive. Nightmare Mode is truly a nightmare. But the feeling of relief after surviving an arena battle, a Doomlander, or even chaos is one of the best feelings of accomplishment. The senseis in Skylanders Imaginators are just awesome. Easily the best designed figures in the entire franchise. Are they huge? Yes. Are they expensive? Yes. Are they worth it? Absolutely. Most of the time. The senseis and villain senseis are the most powerful Skylanders we have ever seen. These senseis also have fantastic movesets. Usually in the past, most Skylanders did three totally different moves for different purposes. For example, Spyro. His main attack is fireballs. Then he could do a head ram and also could fly. None of his moves worked well together for combat, but instead had three different purposes. Whereas, let's say Sensei Tri-Tip, for example, his main attack is his club swings. 
and then he can put down fossil traps to trap enemies. While trapped, he can use his club to deal with the other enemies. And when they are defeated, he can lastly use his charge move to charge into the fossil traps and have them explode, defeating the whole entire wave. Now let's talk about Sensei Sky Cheese. I never really understood the purpose until I realized how difficult some sections in Imaginators can be. Some Sky Cheese are good, some are bad, and some are straight up amazing, but they are all useful and very creative. To use a Sensei Sky Chi, you must wait for their meter to fill. Once full, you can activate, then you become invincible and deal massive damage to all the enemies on your screen for a good amount of time. These moves are the most effective and useful in battle arenas and Doomlander boss fights. What's really creative and fun about Sky Cheese is that everyone's different and you must wait to use it. So when you have it, don't waste it. Yes, yeah, some of them are strange and funny looking like Giant Blaster Tron or Pogo Stick Chompy Mage, but others are awesome and deal huge damage. Like Flare Wolf with four rocket launchers. Chaos with his giant floating head with eye lasers, or even Wolfgang who crowd surfs on skeletons while playing his guitar. Overall, they're really cool and just add to the reasons why senseis are some of the best Skylanders we've ever gotten. Now it's time to talk about the main gimmick of the game and why it's called Skylanders Imaginators. The Imaginators are easily the most creative gimmick along with the best attention grabber for any Skylanders fan and really any gaming fan. You literally get to create your very own Skylander. You can base it off of you and put you into the game, or you can create some wild looking creature to save Skylands. Yeah, I've said it. You guys happy? Save Skylands. As for the customization freedom and creative process, you can nearly have endless possibilities and endless fun. Collecting all the gear sets can be tedious, but it's definitely worth it. Now for the abilities of your Imaginators, you'll receive four options for each attack based on your element and battle class, each option being very unique and having a large impact on your Imaginator's gameplay. Wildly, your Imaginator's level is based on how many senseis you own, so your Imaginator can become very overpowered and make even Nightmare Mode look very, very easy. Overall, being able to create your very own Skylander is awesome and is probably the greatest gimmick in the franchise. The only downfalls being is that they can become very overpowered and the ability section can seem very cookie cutter due to some abilities being very good and some just being horrible. Many players were let down by the boss battles and Imaginators. Whether it was the Doomlanders, Chaos, or even the Guacamole Monster, people were and still aren't happy. And I honestly don't understand why. Yes, some feel repetitive and lazy, but that's much better than an easy fight as most of the Imaginator's bosses are pretty difficult. But players must remember who is creating the bosses in this story. It's Chaos. Chaos has never been the most creative person, so do you really think he's going to create a complex boss battle? No, and it's not even like we're fighting Chaos. We're fighting his terrible creations, which means he's not there to fight or use his powers against us. It's not until the final boss fight where we fight Chaos where there's way more complex attacks because he's there using his powers along with the mind magic to create Doomlanders from all the battle classes to attack us. As for the guacamole monster, it is not that bad. Calm down everyone. It's much better than the sewer monster in Scholarville, that's for sure. That one is repetitive. The guacamole monster seems dumb. Well, I mean, because it is, he's literally made out of guacamole. But as a fight, it's still pretty interactive and sometimes challenging. Shooting the one monster to see that there's a giant one where you must dodge its arms that do huge damage while attacking the head and the other arms, it's overall cool and really overhated. It really just replaced the turret sections in every other game. Oddly, Skylanders Imaginators is at its best after the main story is beaten. Now you may free roam the entire map going wherever you want. You can replay levels, skipping cutscenes, stupid cake part missions. <sighs> Go adventure to the Sensei Realms and expansion levels. Find all collectibles, max out your Senseis with nothing in your way. Head over to the battle arena and see how many rounds you can survive. Run to Pandergast to race. Yes, they kept the racing and it's still fantastic. Seeing and playing all of the features in Skylanders Imaginators has made it one of my favorite Skylanders games. 
Yes, this game has some extremely low points, but it has overshadowing high points. Overall, Skylanders Imaginators is a great game and a great addition to the franchise. It does not deserve all of the hate it receives. In saying that, I give it a 7 out of 10. Hey everybody, Victor from Saving Skylands here, the guy who was talking throughout this entire video yet hasn't shown his face once until now. First off, I just want to say thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for continuing to support the channel every week throughout live streams and videos. It means the world to me. It means way more than you guys know. Um, other than that, let me know your thoughts on this video. Let me know if you guys think I'm wrong. Let me know just your opinions. You ain't got to be rude about it. If you want to be rude, be rude. I just want to answer you. But if you want to have a civil conversation, comment down below. Because I'm honestly curious how people feel about this game. Because some people think it's the worst. Some people think it's the best. And there's like no middle ground. But if I could find some middle ground with the high and the, and the lows, let's do it. So other than that, thank you guys for watching. And uh, I'll see you guys soon.